Hello everyone, uh, in this clip I'm going to talk about uh, a little tip for Malaysian parents who want to buy property in Australia. Um, you see, a lot of Malaysian parents, uh, I'm talking about those with permanent residence because uh, recently we do have some letters from you know, uh, new PR holders who actually before they you know, come to settle down a uh, few months before they do that they actually bought properties um, you know from Malaysia they bought property in Australia while they are still in Malaysia uh, the you know pitfalls of doing that is that you are not very familiar with the surroundings here and you are making a big purchase decisions um, you know in the you know in the hundreds of thousands of Australian dollars so uh, it can be a bit risky because when you're not familiar with the uh, situation you might be paying the fees or uh, paying the prices that uh, locals aren't so willing to pay um, you see a lot of uh, uh, information that you get when you are in Malaysia uh, are from those developments that are you know specifically targeted at uh, foreign investors or you know even if you're PR holders but you're considered foreign in the sense that you are not familiar with the uh, situations you know the prices here in Melbourne so do not try to do that right uh, the best way is you know the best um, you know principle to abide by is to you know stay here uh, until you're comfortable enough you know until you know the place well enough before you actually buy the property Okay, so for those PR holders, right? Uh, recently, we do have letters from our readers. Like there were two of them; they are permanent residents, uh, you know, here in Australia. They're from Malaysia, and they actually bought properties that are near university campuses because the children uh, wants to go to that particular university. And they thought that you know by buying. You know, around those university campuses, their kids would, uh, you know, you know, it's very convenient for them. You know, they walk back and fro five, ten minutes. You know, and it's usually very near the train station and everything. You know, the shops, the supermarkets. But the but but the problem is this. You know, you you buy the property, your kid live there for say three years, and after that, when you want to sell the property, uh, you know, there won't be much capital gain. Uh, for this type of property uh, you know below this clip you will get some links uh, please click on those links uh, these are links to my blogs where we actually write down uh, you know the reasoning why this kind of properties do not fetch you the capital gain that you want uh, that you know normal property is supposed to get and also uh, the rental return can be very unattractive as well because of the service charges and all that and then you can only rent to the students you know some of these apartments are you know mainly restricted to you know student living there right so if your kid finish the three years and they leave you, know, you can only rent it out to other students and that place has to be managed by you know the body corporate by the you know by the building management uh, so that you know, by the time they deduct all the expenses and management fees, you wouldn't get much from the rental as well. And because of the limited scope, right, in the you know potential in, in the market that you can, you know, uh, rent it to, and the people that you can rent it to only to students, you you won't fetch a very good uh, capital gain in that sense. And as you know, right. Um, Developers always develop new, you know, properties to sell to new incoming students and the parents. So, therefore, you know, this kept the, uh, uh, you know, the capital gain from being too significant, you know, for those old student apartments. Like your child lived there for three years, and that apartment is three years old. Three years later, they have new apartments coming up, and then they will market that. You know, at a price that is, uh, you know, 
I mean, it's new, it's attractive, you know, it's much more attractive than the three-year-old apartment. So that's why the three-year-old apartment will never get the capital gain that uh, you always wanted, right? So this is a very limited range of products for a very, range, very limited range of people, right? So if you really want to, um, you know, uh, benefit from this investment, I think the best investment is to buy something that is not for the student market. Right, that could be for anyone in local Melbourne, right? So you have uh, a good mix of different tenants in that apartment, and you know this is what the normal, average local resident you know, would pay, right? So therefore, you won't get ripped off in that sense because a lot of property developers they just develop near the university, or they buy a piece of vacant land, or they buy a piece of uh, an old property, they pull down the whole building and then they start building a five, six storey small apartment block just to market to all these new uh, you know, parents, I mean, new international students coming in, you know, market it to their parents. All right, so uh, do keep in mind of that. So, how do you overcome this? Because your child, now say you have a PR. I mean, the, re the, the implication of having a PR means you don't have to buy those off-the-plan uh, properties. Off-the-plan means that you have to buy a new property that is uh, newly built and all that because the Australian government, they want, um, you know, uh, employment for the locals. So if you are non-permanent resident, you can only buy those properties uh, you built from scratch. So say, um, okay, this is actually directed to a uh, new permanent resident holder right res new permanent resident visa holder all right so what you can do instead of buying those properties near the university campuses you should you shouldn't do that and if your kids still want to live in there let them rent you know in one of those apartment units right don't buy from there but if you still think that you have extra money or you still think that you want to you know benefit from the capital gain right uh, put some money in the Australian property market. I think uh, there's one, you know, way you can do it. Let your kids still continue to, you know, rent, right? live in those apartments, student apartments. All right. At the same time, if you want to buy something, all right, buy an apartment unit or a property that is not near the new city. That is a property like any other property in local Melbourne. It could be anybody living around that area, not just the student cohorts, all right? So then you won't overpay. And number two, there'll be, okay, I mean, number two is the twofold benefit. You will get the capital gain, right? Like any other local properties in Melbourne. And also the return of the property, the return of your investment would be also like any other, you know, investment property in Melbourne, right? Which is a lot higher because the market is not restricted to a certain group of people. And also, um, the uh, yes, you, you get to manage you know, the property. I mean, you get to, what you normally do is say, if you're not in Australia, you will get an agent to manage it for you, but you don't have to pay any body corporate or management fees to the, you know, the whole apartment block, no. Uh, you own the unit outright or you own the landed property outright and you just get you know appoint any agent right to manage your property right and they're only going to take some agent fees off the rental you know and then it's fair and it's you know straightforward right you don't have a lot of different other expenses right? so this could be one of the way right because a lot of uh, asian parents malaysian parents they think that ah you know, I have extra money, I want to invest. And my son is studying here, why not? You know, while he's studying here three years, I just invest in a property that he can live in so he doesn't have to pay rent. Well, that benefit is not worth it, right? Because uh, the rental, I mean, um, you know, it's very hard to get out after that. After the three years, it's very hard to get out of that property. You can't sell, there's not enough capital gain, right? And you can't enjoy the, you know, return from your rental because they have to manage that whole place right and it's only restricted to students who can you know live in there uh, you can't even live in there after your child graduated from that place three years you know and he can't live there 
you know, what's the use of having that property around that area, right? And then you can't enjoy capital gain and you can't enjoy the, you know, uh, rental, the return on investment. So think about that, right? Let them continue, I mean, let them rent in those nearby apartments, it's fine. Anytime, you know, they graduated, they can stop easy, right? But if you want to park some money outside your country, I say in Australia, so you can do, you know, you can park it in some, you know, uh, more, I mean, properties that are more value for money, which are for the locals, which are prices that locals will want to pay. Don't go and buy those properties, the prices are not attractive to the locals, right? So there's a reason why all these properties, you know, get a lot of advertisement, get a lot of, you know, they advertise them outside Australia, to all these parents right, who pay for university education and now they want to pay for right, attract, attracting them to pay for student accommodation right, think about that right, so this message is especially directed to those parents who uh, yeah, have permanent residence visa in Australia but are not so familiar with the situation here. All right. All right, thank you very much have a good day